existence. After a failed assassination attempt on her life, Allegra Geller, escorted by her makeshift bodyguard, tries to hide, unsure of who to trust. She's a high-profile game designer, and the assassination attempt took place as she was uploading her game to other consoles for a demonstration. Now there's only one copy, and she's terrified that the game might be gone. There's only one choice. She and her bodyguard, a man very reluctant to get into video games, have to play it. It is an extremely accurate simulation of reality, however, and the clear distinction between the two becomes difficult. One can't talk about this movie for terribly long without bringing up Videodrome, one of director David Cronenberg's best films. A friend of mine pointed out to me that this was kind of like another Videodrome, where the focus of Videodrome was on television and video, in this one the focus is on video games. Now, it has been a long time since I watched Videodrome, but that is also an excellent film. However, I do think that this one overall works better, the concept than the exploration of simulated reality. With that said, if you like David Cronenberg at all, and you haven't watched Videodrome, do so right now. Just go ahead, I'll, I'll wait. In the meantime, back to this. The plot is very gripping, and while there are some pretty formidable twists, it never really loses you. This is one of several movies to come out around 98-99 to deal with perception and reality. The three others being Dark City, which I haven't watched because I understand it's extremely similar to The Matrix, and I don't want to stop liking The Matrix the pretty good low-budget sci-fi thriller The Thirteenth Floor, and The Matrix, which everybody knows. And this one is the most interesting, I would say. The Matrix is visually stunning, and has a great style to it, and is definitely a fun film. It also manages to incorporate a lot of different science fiction ideas. However, it really doesn't fully explore the concept of reality and fiction being so similar that you can't tell. One of the main themes of one of my all-time favorite science fiction writers, Philip K. Dick. Read him and read him right now. This one, however, very much goes into that. If you are at all into existentialism, watch this film. The acting for the leads is very good, and for everyone, it's fitting, meaning when you're watching something that's going on in the game, it's not gonna be a stellar performance. You know, it's not gonna be off. It's filmed and cut very well. I think the reason this is so overlooked and underrated is the almost complete lack of special effects. The ones that there are are used the way they should be, as tools. They move the story along. They never take your attention away from what's going on they add to the whole. Now if you've watched any Cronenberg, with the possible exception of Spider, and to some extent maybe also a history of violence, you already know he doesn't really hold back as far as violence, gore, and sexuality go. Not if they help his story. And there are bizarre and grotesque visuals and concepts in some of his movies. In this, the game pods are actually living beings. They respond to being touched. They make little sounds. When someone in this movie uses their game pod, it has a sense of intimacy to it. And not necessarily sexual. Some would call it a mother caressing her child. You know, it has some qualities of an infant. In order to play a video game in this movie, you have to have a port installed in your body at the base of your spine. So on your lower back, you have to have a port where the game pods can plug into. So there's this very clear sense of penetration whenever someone plugs into their game pod. Also, Existence can't be played properly if you're only one person. 
So there's a very sort of sensual nature to it. And that might also turn some people off. It's not the first time that Cronenberg mixes the mechanic and or electronic with the flesh. It's seen in Videodrome, it's seen in Naked Lunch, and there might be more. I honestly haven't watched all of his movies, but I am working on it. The film is mainly a science fiction thriller. There's plenty of tension, though not a lot of outright chasing. It should also be noted that this can be very disgusting at times, but none of it is gratuitous. The dialogue is, like with the acting, fitting. Not all of the lines sound natural, at least not in the game. While this on the whole is relatively dark, there is also some humor. Some of it is pretty warped. The DVD comes with no less than three commentary tracks. One by David Cronenberg, the director and writer, one by the director of photography, and one by the visual and special effects supervisor. And all three are worth a listen, I would say. There's also a 53-minute documentary on the work of Carol Spear, the very talented production designer. Now, the film isn't perfect. Some of the effects, they linger on a little bit much, to the point where you can really tell that that wasn't real. It's maybe slightly uneven at points. I do think that the ending is absolutely perfect. It is a stunning climax after 90 minutes of having your eyes absolutely glued to the screen. David Cronenberg does take some liberties and the game in this film really doesn't seem like any game we know. And maybe not one we will know either. All in all, I would say at least rent if you're at all a fan of David Cronenberg, but if you are at all into existentialism, you gotta watch this at least once. That was my spoiler-free review of Existence. I hope you enjoyed it. 